Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Satisfaction Saturday. We're right at the end of the week. God has been so gracious and so good to us. He has allowed us to see Easter, and now we're propelling ourselves into the days ahead, and we're just so grateful for the wonderful ways He blesses us. Like always, let's remember to pray for everybody, all the situations we've seen in the news, all that's been happening all over the world, all of those persons who have found themselves victims of situations circumstances and crises. Let's let's remember, we just came out of the weekend of Resurrection Weekend, which means new life. Let's all give people new opportunities, new chances, and let's reinvigorate ourselves that we might become refreshed to do the work of ministry that God has called us to. Look with me at this passage as we continue in this whole story that we find out about David and Goliath. The text out of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 32 through 51 is very powerful. Now, remember, David has already said, I will fight this Philistine since the rest of you all seem like you're scared. You know, we live in a world today that sometimes people, when they see the adversary, see a, a challenging situation that's bigger than they ever would have imagined, people cower down. I'm so happy that David reminds us the importance of how you have faith for the moment is by reflecting on what God has brought you through. Now, when David says, I'll fight him, and he's talking to Saul the king, Saul says, you're ridiculous. I don't, don't even believe you're coming up with this. This man has been fighting since his youth. This guy is big. This guy has won many battles. And David listens to all he has to say. But David persists in reminding him, I was taking care of my father's sheep while I was on the backside of the desert. There came a lion after my father's sheep. I killed that lion. There came a bear. I killed that bear. And I have taken them through trials and tribulations, through danger seen and unseen. And in the midst of it all, God was with me then. And God is going to be with me now. Who is this big Philistine? I dare he defy the armies of our God. Now, David begins to help us to see how he even just stole one of the sheep right out of the lion's claws, right out of the lion's jaws. And now he says, I'll do the same for Israel. Now, Saul uh, doesn't tell David, back down, go home, go away. Notice what Saul does. Saul tries to give him his armor. He gives him his coat of mail. Can you see it now? Saul, this big guy, six something, and David, this little fella, you, you, you know, right at his teenage years, not even five feet tall. Couldn't you imagine that? As my mom would use the phrase, he looks like lost Johnny, got on clothes that didn't belong to him. You know, can you just see him being weighted down by all of that? David, I guess he probably said in his mind, and I've said it in mine, if it's not working for you, Saul, what makes you think it's going to work for me? But I know what works for me. David begins to help us to see that he knows what works for him. That's a very powerful lesson for all of us. Too often times we think that when we use something that somebody else has used, we could benefit the way they did. But no, we got to use what God has given to us. God has already proven his presence with David by David using his slingshot. Now, David finds himself now in the situation that he takes off all this stuff that the king tried to put on him. But David knows that the Lord is with him. When all of us know that regardless of the challenges, regardless of how big, how monumental they may be, if God is with you, that's more than that challenge in the whole world against you. Now, David sees what's going on. David does something. He picks up five small stones and he gets them out of his shepherd's bag. See, his shepherd's bag was a place where he kept the stones so he could fight off all those other creatures that came after the sheep. But he's also used that bag sometimes to carry his lunch. It was a, it was a bag almost like, quote unquote, our version of a fanny pack. And so David reaches in there. He gets this bag that also has a slingshot in it. And he takes those stones. He hurls them over his head. He lets them go. And he hits Goliath right in the forehead. He knocks him out with his first shot. Couldn't you imagine that? How everybody now, they're just speechless. It goes to show all of us when we use the tools and the talents that God has given to us, we can knock out that situation, whatever it is. We can knock it to its feet. So David does this. He takes Goliath's presence and he uses it to be an instrument of God moving. Now he hits him in the head with this rock. And then David has now conquered him. 
He tells him that I am going to beat you just like he was hurling taunts at David. David said, I'm going to whoop you so bad. I'm even going to feed your carcass to the birds of the air. See, one of the things we always have to be mindful of is not how big the person might be in the fight, but it's the size of the fight that's in the individual. David had the fight in him because David had the power of God backing him. So now David hurls the stone. He knocks Goliath out and then he takes Goliath's own sword and he severs his head. That reminds all of us that evil has to be conquered at its head, at its thought. We must remember that the devil comes with us as strategies, but we have to make sure we sever the strategies from those things and those people will try to bring it to us. David teaches us a powerful lesson. The lesson that you and I can learn is that it doesn't matter how big we are who are in the fight, but we must have a big fight on the inside of us. And that is nobody defies the armies of our God. Nobody defies the presence of our God because God is an awesome God and he doeth all things well. Just as David defeated his foe, I want to remind you, you can defeat all those things that are coming against you with the power of God and the presence of God and using what God has placed in your hand. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we'll have our Sunday time of worship. And this year of 2022, always know God has a blessing in store for you. Sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. Visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.